worship, to encourage.
every season and every single thing that you're walking through. You may be in a season where it feels like you've got victory. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're in a season where you're waiting on the Lord. There's an opportunity to be grateful. And so, God, we choose to obey your word. And first things first, we come in grateful. We say thank you for who you are. Even if all the material things, the outward things don't feel like they line up, God, right now we say thank you for the work you've done in our own hearts, where you've brought us from. You have been our Father, you have been our friend, and we say thank you for that. We thank you that we can trust you, that you're always good, even when we're not good, that you're always faithful when we're unfaithful, that you are enough
Father, we thank you that we shall be like trees planted by the water. Yes. And we shall produce our fruit in season. Yes. God, even if we have to go into the reserves that were hidden from the years of the word that we've hidden in our heart right now, I pray that you activate your spirit inside of us, Lord, so that we look at ourselves in the mirror and speak your word to that dry place, to the desert, to the forest, no matter where we are. Let us speak your word into ourselves and encourage ourselves in you. And so this morning I invite you, wherever you are, whatever season you're going through, would you come with me before the Father? Yes. I pray that if you're in here and the spirit of depression has come to attack your mind, come with me before the Father. If there's a spirit of lack, if you are hurt and bruised in your soul, let us come before our Father, who is the healer of all, yes. the giver of all. Father God, we come before your throne of grace this morning, Father, with hearts of thanksgiving. Father, we understand that this life that you've given us is a gift that we cannot manufacture on our own. We cannot wake ourselves up in the morning, and so we always want to give you praise for the very breath that we breathe. And Father, I pray right now for every need, every lack, every valley, every sunken place, every emptiness. Father God, I pray that you will fill with your Holy Spirit as only you can. Lord, you know every need. Lord, you know where it's coming from. And so Father God, I pray that you meet us at our place of need. And fill us to the overflow so that we can go and even fill the need of those around us, Father God. I thank you because I know that your healing spirit is here. And Father, I pray right now for every physical ailment, every brokenness, every bruised place. Father, I pray that you touch and that you heal and that you just lift up in the name of Jesus. And God, after everything, we will always remember to come back and still to give you praise and still to give you thanks in the name of Jesus.
things can change in a moment, in an instant. So we thank you for it. We thank you for it, God. Father, we just pray today, Father, for an amazing opportunity, God, to come and commune with you and to be in your presence, Lord. And for us to hear what it is that you want to say to us. We've all come in in different stages, different seasons, different positions, but we're all here right now to receive what it is that you have for us, God. So we thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's one thing to be talented. But it's another thing to have the anointing upon your life. And we thank you for the anointing ministry this morning that took us straight to the throne. Yeah. Well, good morning. Welcome to everyone. Welcome to the place. Welcome to the place. I am Ed Canty and my wife, my beautiful wife, Pearl. We are blessed to be the pastors here where our vision is connecting in community through Christ for transformation and abundant living. So welcome. We thank you so much for joining us this morning. So I'm excited about this message. It's been burning me, in me all week to get out. Our message for this week is, there is victory in your valley. There's victory in your valley. And I wish I could preach about and tell you that how to live a valley-free life. If I could give you four or five points, if you do this and you do that, if you wouldn't have any valleys in your life. I've come to learn that God is the God of the mountaintop, but he's also the God of the valley. Mm -hmm. He does his best work in the valley. I want to remind you today that fruit doesn't grow on the mountaintop. It grows in the valley where there's vegetation, it's dense, there's water. See, mountaintops are good for chilling, looking at the views, hanging out, but no fruit is grown on the mountaintop. I've learned that when God wants to do something through us, he first must do something deep in us. And he does that in the valley. The valley actually is the gem of the Holy Spirit. Now, I used to know a little bit about the gem, but right now, me and the gem are estranged. <laughs> We're going to get back together soon. In the valley, it's dark. You're pressed in on all sides, and you don't want to be there. The valley is the stretching place. It's a place where you're uncomfortable. And when you're there, you don't want to be there. It actually feels like warfare. Now, if you have a Pentecostal background like me, if you're in warfare, you plead the blood, you speak in tongues, you anoint with oil, you get your intercessors to lay hands. But when you come out on the other side, you're better for it. Today's message, I'm going to talk to you in two parts. I'm going to give you some characteristic, characteristics of the valley, and then we're going to get in what do you do when you're in a valley? How do you get that victory when you're in a valley position? So the scripture, there's a couple sets of scripture, but the first one would be Psalms 23, verse number 4, very familiar scripture. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. What is a valley? A valley is a place that's typically between two mountaintops. It's got vegetation, it's got water, it's damp. As I said, you're pressed in on all sides. But mountaintops and valleys, they go together. Like sun and rain go together. Joy and pain go together. You can't have one without the other. You really don't get the full effect if you don't have both. So the first characteristics of a valley is they are inevitable. What did Jesus say? 
he said there would be valleys that would come. John verse chapter 16, verse 33, and I'll read it from the Amplified. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. He told you it's coming, but in me you'll have peace. In the world you will have tribulation and distress and suffering, but be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. I like this part. My victory abiding. So he told you, he gave us the word right there. It says, things are going to come, but my victory is where you're fighting from, not what you're fighting for. Valleys are unpredictable. Y'all ever saw those movies where somebody's walking in high ground and all of a sudden they slip and they slide all the way down the hill? They're sliding down into the valley. Valleys don't come when you want them. They don't come on time. You can't be prepared for them. They just come. In fact, your valleys and your problems usually come at the worst time. You don't have time. You're unprepared. And it's completely inconvenient. James says in chapter 4, verse 14, he says, this is pretty deep. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, and then it's gone. Valleys are unpredictable. We try to be prepared. We try to have the backup plan, plan, plan B, plan C. But sometimes you just don't see it coming. You step off the cliff and down you go. Valleys are impartial. Guess what? Everyone experiences the valley. Even those people that you look, like, look at, and they don't look like they're ever going through anything. You think they've got a lot of money. they got the great job. They're always smiling. But sometimes just under the surface, they're going through a valley. Yes. It's dark. There's despair. There's hopelessness. The Bible tells us that it rains on the unjust and not just the just. Just the just. It's not like the cartoons used to see where you got one guy here, it's not raining, and the guy here, and it's raining. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not like that in life. Right. It does happen in seasons. It does happen in a cyclical pattern. Mm -hmm. But everyone goes through valleys. Yeah. Everyone will experience valleys in their life. Psalms, I got a lot of scripture this morning. Okay. Because that's where we get our hope from. We get the promises from it. We get everything that we need. Some people call it the basic instructions before leaving earth. It's all in there. There is nothing new under the sun. Psalms 34, 19 says, Many hardships and perplexing circumstances confront the righteous. But the Lord rescues him from all of them. Man, that song we said, chasing after me, running me down, rescuing me. That's what God does to us. Sometimes it doesn't seem like it. It's like, God, I've been calling you, but you seem far from me. He's not. He's just working things out in the background. He's removing some pitfalls that you, you don't even see before you get there. Sometimes the valley keeps you from going into the deep gorge. Sometimes it keeps you from going into the quicksand, a place that you don't want to be. Valleys are temporary. They're not the final destination. The scripture says, they though I walked through, not the valley where I sat, not the valley where I took a nap, not the valley where I put up a tent or an altar. Altars are good to have remembrance, but you got to keep moving. They have it into them. They don't last. They're not permanent. Even though I walk through 
the valley. The valley is not something for you to stay in your entire life. Temporary denotes a season, a time, a period. I, I just want to put a point on that. Is a life without God is temporary. Everything that you do with, in your life, it should include God. Your marriage, your education, your relationships, your work. God should be included somewhere. It might last a long time, but if God is not the foundation, it's temporary. You got temporary and then you got permanent. When you come to accept Christ and know him, that's permanent. That's eternal. So let's just remember that in all of the things we do, that God is what takes us to the eternal, the permanent. So those are the characteristics. I wanted to tell you about the characteristics. So when you happen to be going through a valley, you can say, oh, it happens to everybody. It's impartial. Oh, it only happens for a season. It's temporary. I can't stay on the mountaintop all the time. Valleys are inevitable. And they're unpredictable. So you know the characteristics when you see them. So now we're going to get into what do you actually do when you're in the valley? And scripture from this is coming from Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 10. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Who took it to the valley? The Spirit of the Lord took him to the valley. Must mean he wanted to do something there. And caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, God, thou knowest. Again he said to me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto the bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. I will lay sin you upon you, and you will bring up flesh upon you, and I will cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and I, as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when, he, when I beheld to, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon this flesh, upon this slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded, and the breath came upon them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Amen. Man, there is a lot in there. Amen. There is a lot in that bit of scripture there, in that ten verses. Point number one, when you're going through a valley, remember that God is with you. He took him there, so he is with him. It says that the hand of the Lord was upon him. So when he was in the valley, he was not by himself. The message translation says it like this. God grabbed me. Anybody ever had God grab them when you were going the wrong way and he just snatched you up? <laughs> Wherever it would be, I won't call out any places it might be, but did he snatch you up when you were doing wrong? Were you in the valley? Were you in the twilight zone when he grabs you? Isaiah 43 and 2 says, When you go through deep water, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. You will walk through the fire of oppression. You will not be burned up, and the flames will not consume you. He's saying you won't even smell a smoke. That's right. When I got you in the fire and I'm with you, you won't even smell of smoke. Amen. You're fire resistant. Amen. God led him into the valley. He grabbed him, and he was with him. You know, there's a song called, 
Waymaker. Mm -hmm. And it talks about even when I don't see you working, when I don't feel you working, you're working. When I don't feel you, you're working. What I know and what I understand is when I can't trace the hand of God on my life, I can trust his heart. Yes. When I can't trace the hand, I can definitely trust the heart. No God is with you when you're walking through the valley. Point number two, look for the possibilities. Man, what was all around him in the valley? Bones. 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 <laughs> we got to look for the possibilities. See, the valley is the breeding ground for miracles. It's where God does his best work. You know, sometimes we have a natural bent towards doubt. I know we're children of God and we believe, but sometimes we have a natural bent towards doubt. You're rolling down the highway and your tires pop out. Oh, Lord, the devil's trying to get me. No, you knew you were supposed to change your tires six months ago. Yes, amen. you got to look for the possibilities. What about that little guy, the little shepherd boy? What was the little shepherd boy's name? David. David. Mm -hmm. Man, everybody likes to talk about David. Mm -hmm. They talk about Goliath. But where was David when he went, before he went to go fight Goliath? Where was he? He was in the valley of Elah. He was in the valley of Elah. And you know what he did while he was in the valley? Because, you know, in valleys, there's typically water that runs through in the valleys. What did David do? David picked up five smooth stones that he used to defeat Goliath. What are we doing? Are we looking for the possibilities in our valley situation? Are we looking at what's around us? I can tell you what, in the pandemic in 2020, a lot of people found opportunities. A lot of businesses were grown. Even though it was a rough time in a valley for all, a lot of people found ways to make money, yes. ways to better their lives. Look for the possibilities around you. Yeah. At my previous church uh, back in Virginia, we used to say something in our faith confession saying, opportunities are searching for me and I am prepared to receive them. Yeah. Are you prepared? In our previous series, we talked about awareness. We talked about being aware of opportunities to be generous but we need to be aware of opportunities where there's things that we need to keep us moving through the valley and to not get stuck in the valley. Look around you. There's things that can be used. Point number three. Take a step into the unknown. Look at your neighbor and say, take a step. I was a little weak. Look at your neighbor and say, take a step. Take a step. God said to Ezekiel, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, you know. Why are you asking me? You God, you know. God never asks a question he doesn't already know the answer to. What he's trying to do is he's trying to reveal something to us. If we looked at the previous point, look at the possibilities. I would have, I'm glad that Ezekiel didn't become all high and mighty. Yes, Lord, we stand upon the word of God. We know that you can make these walls live. Hallelujah. If he had done that, I would have moved right on to chapter 38. I would have kept it moving. God will Take a yes with a question mark. Can these bones live? Yeah. <laughs> my kids and my family tell me I'm being untruthful when my voice gets high. <laughs> there are times when we do give God a solid yes. Hey, can I bless your business? Yes. Can I get you this promotion? Yes. Can I bless your marriage? Yeah. All right, 
right, y'all in a mirror, keep looking straight ahead. Straight ahead. God, do you know that woman you gave me? No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I gotta go home. I'm kidding. God will take a yes with a question mark. See, oftentimes we are uncomfortable of giving God are not enough. It's not as much as we want to give them, but we give them our very best. That song says, Jaira, you're more than enough. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you just got to get comfortable and say, yeah, and then move out and step out. Stop waiting to be ready to take the step. Sometimes even if you hear a clear word from God, and a day or two, you'll be like, oh, was that me? Or was that the pizza? Or, you know, what was it? And, you, and, and, you, and you're a little bit fearful. You got to be comfortable taking the step into the unknown. As a matter of fact, you're never enough. We, we're, we're never enough from that perspective. But God can do much with the small. Of course, we would want to feed the 5,000 if we had 5,000 loaves of bread and 5,000 pieces of fish. But sometimes God has to take the small thing and multiply it. He's got to take, put his super on top of the natural. And we got to be comfortable with it. Yeah. If God told you, sometimes you just got to step out there. Faith is a place of risk. Faith takes a backbone and not a wishbone. Faith takes us standing in the place where, and we're shaking in our boots. And when we're shaking in our boots, somebody told me, drop to your knees and pray. That's what faith does. You often hear people talk about faith and fear cannot exist in the same place. I think they're married. <laughs> I, I, I think they're married. I'm fearful, which is the reason why I need to have faith. I don't know what's going to happen, so I need to have faith. Faith is like that pit in your stomach that you just can't seem to get rid of. Some people call that the lack of peace. And if you're charismatic, you start to rub your stomach. I don't just, I don't feel it in my spirit right now. I, I know you want me to serve, but the Lord has me resting right now. Yeah. I thank God for that pit in my stomach, that faith. I thank God because it allows me to continue to pray, to continue to look toward him, to continue to believe in what he's called me to do. It drops me to my knees. When God called us to start the place, it was scary. Yeah. As a matter of fact, most of you have heard this story. When we, uh, in November of 2020, we said, yes, God, we're not going to be so arrogant to disobey what you're calling us to do. 2020. 2020 is one for the books. Yes. <laughs> Nobody will ever forget the year 2020. Amen. So we said, yes, God, we'll do it. November 2020, Pearl and I said, 2022 sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good to me. But we said, okay, but God, we, but God we'll, 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 we'll listen to whatever it is that you say. And then in January, I was in my office, Pearl was in the shower, and we both heard Easter. Now my wife being the logical person who she is, she said, which Easter? <laughs> <laughs> Take a step into the unknown. Amen. Right now there are people sitting here in this place right now that God has been speaking to you about something, whether it's a business, whether it's going back to school, there's something that God's been speaking to you about. If he's been speaking to you about it, remember, he's with you, and there are possibilities all around you. Amen. Take a step into the unknown. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
Point number four. Prophesy to your situation. Prophecy. Hmm. What's, what's that? Prophecy. Now some people say, like, you know, speak about the future. Hmm. Because we got some people that probably when I say prophecy might be a little scared. My wife was looking at me like. And then some people might be so excited about it. Let's bring it right back into the middle. Prophecy 101. Get a word from the word. Get a word from the word. And when you find that word, what I want you to do is I want you to say it until you believe it. And say it until you believe it. And say it until you believe it. And then say it until you see it. And I'm not talking about the name it and claim it, blab it and grab it. I'm talking about taking the unadulterated, uncompromising truth of God's word and speak it over your life. And Jesus did not say, talk about the mountain. He said, talk to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. He didn't say, hey, Ezekiel, grab your phone, post it on your IG, post it on your Facebook. No. He said, speak to the situation. Let's choose a promise from God over the promise. In this passage of scripture, he told Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones. When God tells you to speak something or he says something to you, what is your expectation? What is your expectation? When Ezekiel spoke to those bones, all of a sudden there was a rattling and a bunch of noise in the valley. And I'm sure Ezekiel was about to hightail it out of there. Bones? Dead bones? Dried up bones? What's going on? But when he spoke to the bones, there became a noise. Mm -hmm. Learn to tune your ear into God. Sometimes the noise that you hear is not a distraction. Sometimes it's God speaking to you in your particular situation. Speak to it. Speak to it. As I wrap up with my last point here, he told Ezekiel, to invite the wind. Right. He told him to invite the wind. My wife is one of the smartest people I know. She's an intellectual. <laughs> and sometimes she likes to have intellectual conversation. And my son follows right after her. And sometimes I just want to talk about the game. I want to talk about this big piece of chicken. I don't, I don't, you know, what, you know, my wife says stuff like, when you turn on the light switch, I wonder what's going on behind. Does the electrodes and the electrons, do they touch? How does this happen? That's my wife. And I'm, I'm not too bad myself. We could have structurally put things in place to start the place. We could have built up the, the foundation and the four walls. And it would have been okay. But this point, it says, invite the wind. See, when the bones and the flesh and the sinews and the muscles and the tissues and all that came together and they stood up, they still didn't have breath in them. They still didn't have life in them. See, the, we believe in the power, the presence, and the person of the Holy Spirit. It's not Father, Son, and Holy Scripture. It's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We, we have the, as believers, we have the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of us. Dwelling. He's chilling. I challenge you today to have him to invade your space. Amen. Speak, he 
said in the scripture, he said, speak to the wind. I call the four winds to come forward. Are you speaking to the Holy Spirit? Are you allowing him to convict you when you don't know whether to go to the left or the right? Is the Holy Spirit guiding you? Is he leading you? Is he moving you into all things? Right. Ask him to invade your life. Speak and prophesy to the four winds. When you're walking through the valley, remember you're only going through. It's not your final destination. You're just going through. Refuse to become discouraged or defeated. Say to yourself, I will walk through this valley. Say it with me. I, I will, will walk through this valley. valley. I will remain calm and I will take deliberate step. Step by step by step by step by step by step. As my friend Pastor Justin like to say, you got to keep on stepping. You got to keep on stepping. As you walk through that valley, keep on stepping knowing that God is with you. Knowing that as I look around, I may need something. I look for the possibilities of what's around me. It said in Psalm 23 and 4, it says, His rod and his staff, they comfort me. And if you look a little further in that book of Psalms right there, it says, Goodness and mercy shall follow me Amen. on the mountaintops or in the valley. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. God will fight for me in the valley. God will defend me and protect me. When you go through the valley, and if you've ever seen the war movies, army movies, when they walk through the valley, the soldiers, they hold, they hold their weapons over their head. When you're walking through the valley, I encourage you, look up and hold your weapon above your head. Hold your weapon high. The sword of the spirit. Everything you need is in here to get you through the valley. Yes. Know that you can have victories even when you're in a valley position. Amen. When you get your victory, you know that the mountaintop experiences can be much better. Would you stand with me today as Leslie ministers this song called Great Are You Lord?
talked about having victory in the valley and we talked about God going through with us. We need to know God so he'll go through with us. So we never like to take anything for granted. If you don't know this God and this Jesus that we're talking about, today is your opportunity to invite him into your life. And maybe you do know him, but 2020 got you wrecked, got you messed up, got you hurt that you unfortunately walked away from God. Today is a great day to recommit and come back because he's standing there on the porch with open arms and when he sees you he runs off the porch with open arms to come and meet you so if that's you if you just raise your hands we thank you God we thank you Lord hallelujah we bless your name thank you can have your seats. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. When you come to church, any church, it's a worship service. And every point about the service is about worship. The singing, of course, that's what we typically attribute to worship. The greeting, the welcome desk, all of the technical things that go on behind the scenes, the sound, it's worship. So we want to continue in the service with worship, with our generosity. That which he is the source and our jobs are a resource. So we just thank you for those who have already supported the place. We, we're so blessed and honored at your giving and, and how it's, you guys are showing that you're living a generous lifestyle. And so there's a few ways to give and we, we've we got, you can go old school and you can do check or cash and we've got envelopes and we've got containers and on the back desk or if you high tech, you can use push pay and you can text the place, all one word, to 77977. Text the place, all one word, to 77977. Or if you like to use Cash App, you can, the handle for Cash App is dollar sign the place CLT. Dollar sign the place CLT. Amen. things out in the open is like where do you substantiate what you stand on and so we're asking you to um, share and worship and in generosity so the scripture I'd like to share is Proverbs 3 verse 5 and it reads trust in the trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight or understanding and what I really have on my heart is so many of us thought we knew how this world worked, right? We understood the physics of how the world worked. We understood the systems of the world. But I think what 2020 taught us is we can know, but there's always that unknown that can get thrown into the spanner and stop everything. And so what we know for sure, though, is that we can trust in the Lord. Amen. And what we know for sure is that he's faithful to his word. And he's not a man that he should lie or that he should be liable or owe us anything. And so as we come before the Lord in worship and we give, we give with the understanding that God is faithful to his word and he will bless abundantly that we have given. So if you come, we'll just quickly pray over the giving. Father, we thank you for the means to provide. We thank you, Father God, for the means to have increased. Father, we pray for every person who is out of the generosity of their heart and the faithfulness and obedience to your word giving. Father, we pray for 
good stewardship, Father, good ground for their giving to go into. Father, we pray for those on the other side of the giving, Father, that their lives be enriched by that which, which has been given. We just give you all the praise and the honor for the giving in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So for all of our first time guests, get that right. Is it is or is it get? First time guests, we have a welcome table back there. We'd love to grab your information so we can stay in contact with you. Currently, the place is meeting right here on the second and fourth Sundays of the month. Our sister church, Open Arms CLT, with Pastor Justin Griffith, uh, meet on the first and third, and they typically uh, post something on social media, knowing you, not letting you know exactly where they're going to be. So, we thank you. We pray that you have a great day, a blessed day. Take a nap, because I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> and we can't wait to see you guys next time. We do have something in the works. We haven't quite worked out the details, but it's a worship night called Soak, where we just come and we soak in the presence of God. As soon as we get all the details, we'll get those out to you right away. Thank you, and have a blessed day. Amen. Going to 11th grade? Yeah. Oh, wow. So you're an upperclassman now. Yeah. Oh, wow. Where's Mina, man? Mina? Oh, she's still she's out there in the beach. Okay, 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 okay. No, no, no. Where's, where's, where's? Moya. Moya, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she's out there with the, uh, helping with the kids. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it.